Now we've been over here singing, let the light shine down on XRP. Our community remains as resilient as ever and the haters just can't stand it. They've tried to do everything that they can to FUD us, kick us while we're down. We get sued by the SEC. Despite all of this, the energy remains positive. The momentum continues to build. Now we have utility coming to the XRP ledger and we cannot be stopped. And what did Ripple just announce? US dollar backed stablecoin coming to the XRP ledger issued by Ripple. So another domino falls that takes us towards that end game of XRP realizing full utility, Ripple building out their full suite and product offerings, right? And really what the US dollar stablecoin is gonna do is complete that last mile. And it's gonna be another source of revenue for Ripple, which is very important too. We're gonna to talk more about that. And this is what they can't stand. They can't stand how much money Ripple is making. They can't stand the fact that many of us in the XRP community are still in profit. And even if we're not, we still show up every day with a smile on our face. We're still building. We still got deals. We're still cooking. We don't give up. We don't bend over. We're not going to quit. We're not going to relent. And we're not going to be done fighting for a level playing field even after the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit concludes. Because we're here for more than just some crypto gains, bro. We're here to save our country. And if you're with us, you guys already know the deal. Make sure you're subscribed up here so you don't miss any of our updates. And I appreciate you guys for sharing out our content far and wide. Let's take a look at it. Oh, remember that little silly pet rock gold? I'm not talking about Bitcoin. I'm talking about that little silly pet rock called gold. What about this other one that we like to play with that, that shines so nicely? Silver. Well, gold is back up to a new all-time high, folks. Take a look at it. As I've been saying, this thing is absolutely primed to keep on pushing gold up to 2300. That's right, folks. We have broke 2300 for gold. And we've been talking about this one for a while. It was boring. It was dead. It wasn't sexy. Nobody wanted to touch it. Now we got silver up to 27 and a half. Momentum continues to build. Let's see where we're at here in the cryptocurrency space. Up to 67,900 for Bitcoin, kind of just chopping sideways in this range. You guys already know we got the solar eclipse coming up here on April 8th. Watch out for the, excuse me, <clears throat> watch out for the Solana sacrifice on the solar eclipse. Uh-oh. And then we have a 59 cent XRP. So if you're looking to snag up that XRP, sub 60 cents. You got it. Now, listen in on this one, folks. If you want to understand just how rigged these markets are and how we're finally starting to break through out of it, listen in on this clip here from the CEO of uh, First Majestic Silver Corporation, Keith Newmeyer. Explain how silver is leveraged 400 times by the banks. Listen in on this one. Think, think about these numbers for a second. So the paper market trades a billion ounces a day. Yeah. Silver, <laughs> billion ounces a day. So, the uh, call. Let's say there's 320 trading days of the year. Okay, so that's 320 billion ounces of paper silver trade in a year. You know, round it down to 300 million or 300 billion just for the hell, hell of it. So you have 300 billion ounces of silver trading every year. The banks know exactly what's coming to their doorstep. Because they know the miners are, are producing 820 million ounces. So, and that, that those ounces are going to come through their door. And they know when those ounces come through their door, and they're selling, pre selling those ounces in the paper market to commercial buyers. And, and as they write these contracts, it's in their best interest to keep the price relatively stable so, so that they're not offside. On, on that order from Sony that just came in for 50 million ounces of silver to build their televisions. So, so the leverage, it just, you know, is something in the order of 400 to one. Yep. So for every one physical ounce of silver being produced by a mining company, it's leveraged 400 times in the financial markets through the paper markets, right? So us as a mining company, we produce 10 million ounces of silver a year and uh, 25 million uh, equivalent if we include gold, but just on pure silver basis, 10 million ounces of silver. So that's being leveraged 400 times. So if I get the math right here, that would be 4 billion ounces of paper silver. So if we put all our ounces through our own mint, 
I'm removing 4 billion ounces of paper silver out of the market. Right. So he's explaining there that, that they're 10 million ounces when they keep that within their own mint with the, they send it to their mint right and they keep it within their own and it doesn't get put out here into circulation they're removing right the the equivalent you leverage it up by 400 times these banks are truly incredible and it's finally starting to break folks and gold silver oil all these commodities they're sending the signal as if we are going into war and the markets are completely disconnected from this reality and many people are going to get caught off guard the other thing that folks don't understand is that the average retail portfolio is actually finally just getting back to break even uh, from the 2022 drawdown QE Infinity says investors today lack discipline and don't know how to manage risk. Well, we see that pretty often in the meme coin crypto space, don't we? Throwing 100% of your money into long index funds isn't an investment strategy. And this is what folks have been doing in the stock market too, right? This mentality of speculation, uh, you know, um, over leveraged speculation has, has run rampant in the equities in the traditional stock market as well. Bob Elliott shares the average retail portfolio experienced a 35% drawdown in 2022. Yeah, everybody forgets about that bear market when NVIDIA went down 68%. <laughs> they forget about that one. And is now only getting back to highs on a nominal basis and still has another 10% to go to return to highs on a real basis. So, you know, this is why we've been explaining how this equities market stock market is completely disconnected from the reality we're starting to see that shift back to the real economy real commodities real value that actually runs our world and this is why gold and oil are sending that signal silver up to 27 and a half also moving and why you know bitcoin has gone up so much i call bitcoin the best instrument for speculation in this current environment because you don't have to go to the precious metals dealer you don't have to you, you know uh, you, you just go with uh, on your phone, you click a couple buttons and you've bought Bitcoin. That's why it's one of the best instruments for speculation. Now, as far as payments, well, it's completely failed. It's an absolute joke. And don't take it from me. Watch this clip from George Gammon. I think that he's in Argentina. He, he's somewhere down there and he's trying to use the lightning wallet and he's trying to use strike or something like that. And uh, let's just say the program's not really working out. Listen to George Gammon. And so he told me to do strike, I think it was. I did strike, but then I was trying to transfer my Bitcoin over to the Lightning Wallet, which is strike from Blue Wallet over to strike. And I had to set up the strike account and they required an email address. So I'm like, okay, no big deal, give them the email. And then they asked for my phone number. I'm like, okay, so I gave them the phone number. And then they asked me for my, I'm not kidding. They asked me for my name, and all of these details, my address, and then they asked me for my social security number to set up the app. I'm like, no, this is this is completely stupid. So obviously I didn't do that because it defeats the purpose of the whole trip or what we're trying to prove here, what we're trying to show. So I just deleted the app. I mean, it's done. It's been a nightmare. Yeah, Bitcoin's <laughs> been kind of a pain in the butt. I'm, I'm disappointed. Um, hopefully it'll get better as we go through the trip. But I've got Blue Wallet, you don't have to show them. Yeah. <laughs> but I've got Blue Wallet, and then I've got, uh, well, I had, was it Strike? Was that the one that I had? I don't know which one you had. I think it was Strike. Because remember, we were setting that up with, with Luke. Yeah. And he's like, do um, Satoshi's wallet. That's the one I had. Yeah. And then I tried to find it on my phone. It's gone. Mm -hmm. And I tried to go to the app store and download it. It wasn't available. And Luke said Satoshi's wallet, the wallet of Satoshi, is no longer available to American citizens. So then he's like, do Moon. I'm like, ah, is there any other one that's, that's I can't take that name. Uh, we got Satoshi's wallet, moved to Moon wallet, moved to Blue wallet, moved to this. And this is when the rubber meets the road, right? It's one thing to talk hypothetically about Bitcoin saving the world as these guys, you know, sit around and smoke Bitcoin, hopium all day long, talking about how they're going to transform the world. And then when you actually try to go apply it right in these countries, it's a complete joke. And this whole idea of, well, you know, Bitcoin's going to get us around all this, you know, censorship and all this and that. And then, like you said, they're trying to pull all your info now, too. It's just it's just been a complete failure for payments on the ground, real payments. 
And so I just don't get why some of these countries like El Salvador and others haven't taken a serious look at other cryptocurrencies like XRP. Sure, if you want to hold Bitcoin on your balance sheet as a reserve, you think that that's a good move for your country, then that's great. God bless you. But for actually trying to get payments done, let's get something that actually works. Not even necessarily has to be XRP, but something that actually works. And, you know, it's funny because Bitcoin... It has to go centralized with layer two solutions like Strike and Lightning and all these other blue wallet, Satoshi wallet. Um, you know, it has to go centralized to actually be able to scale for payments, which defeats the whole purpose of Bitcoin in the first place, right? Now, speaking of centralization, well, now JP Morgan says Ethereum could avoid security label amid decreasing Lido share. Now, Lido, I guess, is the largest uh, staking uh pool i guess or i don't know if they're a pool or what they are but it's funny because it's like okay so ethereum started out as an investment contract with the ico and then bill hammond came to the stand and said that now it's sufficiently decentralized so now it's a commodity then it went to proof of stake and now this is where all the concern has come about right with the sec investigating ethereum and whether or not it's a security so it started as a security went to a commodity after hinman went to proof of stake back to a security. And now JP Morgan saying, well, now the largest staker is, you know, diluting their shares and spreading out or whatever they're doing. Right. So now it's back to not being a security. Now it's a commodity again. It's just hilarious to watch the Bitcoin program, the Ethereum program. And I'm not trying to just be a hater, right? It's just simply acknowledging the facts that the program's really just not working out. And the lack of legal clarity would be a concern for me as an investor. You know, if anybody else wants to hold Bitcoin and Ether, that's great. You're probably going to still catch some gains this bull run. I think it'll still do all right. But when it comes to actually solving real world problems that are valued in the trillions, okay, there's no chance. There's no chance. Okay. Now, continuing on, we have so much happening in the background here. Ashley Prosper summarizing it. Stablecoin, reg reg uh, stablecoin, reg wow. Only to finish my first cup of coffee here, folks. Stablecoin regulations, FIT Act legislation, SEC crypto lawsuits, SEC FOIA requests, SEC uh, Office of Inspector General investigation, SEC Ethereum investigation, Ripple stablecoin work, XRP Unleashed documentary, blockchain investigations. April has already started with a bang and with just under nine months until the end of the year, it's going to be a wild ride. Absolutely. And I'm trying to focus on who's actually getting something done. I've been very interested by this stronghold project right here, folks. Not here to give you financial advice or give you the buy signal on this one. I'm just uh, very fascinated with what they're doing over here at the stronghold company. Stronghold is going to be a gold sponsor at the Nacha Online Smarter Faster Payments 2024. And their CEO, Sean Bennett, the co-founder of Stronghold, will be presenting exclusive payment insights to industry leaders in the banking and payment system. And Sean Bennett used to be, he was early on actually uh, working on the XRP ledger at Ripple. So uh, very interesting The Nacha, that's... Um, Nacha governs the thriving ACH network, right? So it's all about the wire transfer network, the payment system that drives safe, smart, and fast direct deposits and direct payments. Stronghold really uh, set, setting themselves up pretty well here, and uh, we'll be following up on that one as well. Now, as far as this stablecoin goes, right, what does this mean? Santiago Velez shares this, and this is so inc important right here, folks, because this is an additional source of revenue for Ripple besides selling XRP. Right. As Ripple builds out these additional products and offerings, it puts less pressure on them to sell XRP, which is a good thing. Right. Ripple makes money from the interest from the bonds, commercial paper and money market funds backing each stable coin. Right. They get four or five percent on their bonds. That's cash money coming in the bank. Fees. XUSD on the XRPL and Ethereum networks allow for liquidity pools against other assets like XRP, wherein they are the market maker. Even better, avoiding impairment loss with the new AMM. That's right. Third part is custody. Medico as a subsidiary allows banks to issue stable coins and safely custody digital assets, put capital to use on ledgers without having to dip into capital reserves required by Basel 3. Clever. Absolutely love to see it. The other thing is the acquisition of uh, standard custody and trust. You know, you have to understand that that might be the bank, right, where they can keep all of these assets at. Um, and they're saying that they're going to report every month on their reserves. And you know, a lot of people are speculating, you know, which bank is going to hold all this? Well, they have standard custody and trust, 
And a trust company works even better, you know, in some aspects because they're not going to be lending out these assets, right? A trust company is designed to just hold the assets. And so I am speculating that I, I think that, you know, the acquisition of Standard Custody and Trust was made to help fulfill this role of holding the reserves for a stable coin that Ripple wants to issue on the XRP ledger. The other thing that Standard Custody and Trust can be used for in um, working with Medico as well is tokenizing other real world assets, right? And, and HSBC has already chosen Medico to tokenize their gold. And I think that there's a lot more coming that way where real world assets like treasuries, mutual funds, bonds can be held at Standard Custody and Trust um, and, and they can be moved through Medico's harmonized platform for DeFi. And so you have custody, you got institutional DeFi, and we have a lot more incredible uh, issuers. I think they're going to be showing up to the XRP ledger to tokenize these various assets. Now, to finish off here, I wanted to share this one, folks, because many people don't get this. We have folks that are trying to, you know, let XRP step into the spotlight, as I, as I shared on the title of this video. We want to see the truth about XRP get out there. We're not here to tear anybody else down. We're just trying to build our little deal here. And that's what's being done with this documentary by Fruition Productions. Yesterday, I hosted a space on Twitter. It is available over there for recording. It's about an hour and a half long. And it's a full conversation where we took questions from the audience. We allowed people to come up and ask Chris questions. And it was incredibly positive. Had Coach JV up there, had many other people stop by. And it was just a lot of fun. It was very positive. And it's incredible to watch how even people within our own XRP community want to hold us back. They're all mad that, oh, so-and-so is in it and not this person. And, you know, and I joked at Chris, I said, you mean to tell me that you didn't get all 8,000 XRP ledger token projects on this uh, documentary? You didn't interview every single developer working on the XRPL, you know, <laughs> and all these people that are like, uh, you know, complaining that more devs didn't get uh, interviewed. Actually, they've gone out of their way to try to find developers and builders to get interviewed. Um, and, and, and I think that you've got a combination of both folks that understand more than just developing on the XRP ledger, because half this story is not about the tech. It's not about this tech at all. And if you know anything about marketing, what's going to sell to a broader audience ain't the tech. A developer and a builder coming on and talking about the tech ain't going to sell. It, it just isn't. It's just not, right? There's a reason why these builders and developers don't have YouTube channels and don't have big audiences. And I try to help all these builders. I've had the open invitation on my show forever. If you're building real utility on the XRP ledger, you have a free open invitation on my show, right? And I do everything that I can to uplift these builders to shine the spotlight on them. And I just don't get this mentality from the XRP community, some members, and it's a fringe minority, but they're the most vocal, right? And I don't have any more patience for it. I don't acknowledge any of it. I mean, we're trying to shine the light on XRP, the truth about XRP, the utility that's coming to the XRP ledger. And part of the story is that the government came after us with the SEC. That led us into investigating the SEC. And where did that lead us? It led us to ETHgate. I'm sorry that that's where the truth led us. When you have an allegiance to the truth and you won't stop until you get there, whatever you find is whatever you find at the end of that rabbit hole. And that's what we've opened up. And that's what we're going to expose. And that's, I think, the part of the story that's going to sell the best outside of the XRP community, outside of the crypto community. What sells? A story of crime, corruption, backdoor dealings, shadiness. That's what's sexy for an audience outside of crypto that doesn't want to watch crypto nerds talk about building tech. Respect to the builders, okay? <laughs> but folks, we need to understand that we are blowing away our competition when it comes to the utility that's coming to the XRP ledger. We're finally playing catch up, but we're doing it right. Our ledger's not breaking like these other ones. And then... We're blowing these guys out of the way. There was a documentary here that was dropped yesterday. A Bitcoin story. Okay, This was dropped the same time as the Fruition Films. In fact, it was actually dropped two days ago on April 4th. Yesterday, April 5th, we got the XRP one. Look at this. They're only at 11,000 views on this documentary for Bitcoin. On this little 
show, right? And Digital Asset Investor says, this is a documentary that was promoted by crypto propaganda outlet Coindesk yesterday. And that's what cracks me up. You go, these guys can't even pull a thousand views on their videos on YouTube. <laughs> it is so funny. Fruition Films posted their trailer yesterday as well. The views for XRP Unleashed trailer dwarf the views on this one. People will crawl over glass to find the truth. Lies never stand the test of time. And this is what I'm talking about. We're already at like well over 200,000 views on the trailer for the documentary uh, on the one that dropped yesterday. And I think that we surpassed a million views on the second trailer as well. And so people in the community are trying to come out and attack us. And it's like, guys, let the light shine down on us. Okay. This, this is about our community, all of us together. And not everybody's going to make it on the documentary. And let me, let me make one final point too. You have to understand the fruition films is self funding this documentary. They are shelling out their own money, traveling around the country to put this out. And people want to hate on them for doing that. This is America. This is a free country. If you want to go make a documentary, why don't you go make one? If you want to go build something, why don't you go build something? Oh, wait, it's easier to sit and be a Twitter talking head or a tiktok -y boy, you know, just running your mouth and criticizing everybody that's actually trying to move this space forward. So uh, I just continue to say, let the light shine down on XRP, our community. We, we don't even acknowledge these guys that are trying to hold us back because the momentum is just so strong. We are moving so fast towards this end goal. And you can start to see that light at the end of the tunnel as we wrap up this SEC versus Ripple lawsuit. Utility coming to the ledger. We got XRP Vegas coming up. We got an XRP documentary coming out. I'm sure it's going to be the first of many XRP documentaries. Okay. What's not to love? What's not to love? And you know what they hate the most is the fact that despite not much price action for XRP, how positive we remain. We show up every day with a smile on our face and we continue to work. Here we are on a Saturday. I'm working. Guess what tomorrow is? More work. Sunday. Seven days a week, we are showing up every single day with a smile on our face and we're moving towards our objective of creating generational wealth for our families. And I'm so glad to have you guys with me on this journey. If you appreciate what we do, make sure you guys subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our updates. I'm going to be heading on over to do our Discord weekly call right now. Every Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, I sit down with my Discord group, a group of adults, where we can actually talk about business deals, talk about making some money, right? Uh, many people confuse the facts, thinking that we just sit on our XRP and hold it and pray to the XRP gods that we're going to go to the moon. It's not the case. And so I'm going to be heading on over here to do our Discord weekly call. If you guys are looking to get access to that, just go to my website, ZachRector.com. You sign up through Patreon to get access to Discord, and we would love to have you in the family. God bless all of you guys. We will see you in the next one. Take care out there. I am your host, Zach Rector. I really appreciate all of the love and support. If you want to support the channel, just remember that you can start by smashing that thumbs up for me, sharing this content far and wide, and everything else is at my website.